Hi and welcome to today's episode of Reviewed on Dante TV. Today we'll be reviewing the Apple iPhone 4S, yay! For those who are living in the ice ages, the iPhone 4S is a touchscreen smartphone developed by Apple. I'll show you guys a quick unboxing and it's actually really simple so just check it out. Okay, so here's the box. It looks really nice. It says iPhone 4S. This is actually the 64 gigabyte white colored iPhone 4S. And there it is. It's as simple as that. You open the box and it's there. It's got nice plastic wrap around it. iPhone. And if you've actually opened an iPhone, it looks exactly the same as this. It's got your headphones and your power cable and that's all. Today I'll be reviewing the iPhone 4S from more of a photographer's point of view. On my first thoughts, I was actually really disappointed. I actually stayed up all night, well, it was a 4am release in Australia, watching the text and photo updates on my iPad. I ended up falling asleep with my iPad in my hands and I, I woke up at about 8am and I got a message from my friend that actually said it is an iPhone 4S instead of an iPhone 5. I was actually quite disappointed until I did some research on it. I was totally blown away by the camera quality. It's also building on what's already a great phone. I was also very skeptical as to how good the camera was, but hearing that it was a backlit sensor which means that it takes better shots in low light conditions and increased the aperture value to 2.4 which I was totally excited about. Of course the sensor isn't like a micro four thirds sensor or anything like that, but it, it can totally compete with those high end compact cameras. So today as a request from Losty29, I borrowed my friend's iPhone 4 and did a little comparison with the cameras. So here is the comparisons of the videos and photos. So today we're going to be comparing the iPhone 4 versus the iPhone 4S in photography wise. So like how good the photos turn out and also video. And I've got my trusty Horace Bernou monopod that is a part of a tripod as well. So that's really cool. I've got the links to, the, to my um, review and unboxing of it on the screen. So check that out because it's a really great tripod, it's really sturdy and I've got my tripod to iPhone connector which is great for these type of shots and videos so you're going to see the difference today. Okay, so now we're walking around with both iPhones on the tripod, on the monopod actually, just walking casually as you can see on my camera, hello, and um, just walking around can we do what can we do we'll have a closer look at these leaves see how the focus is looks all right head towards my camera so this is actually my setup go road my Sigma 30 millimeter lens Canon EOS 550D and yes what else? What else can we do? Walk around. Walk around. Oh, the weather's really good today. It's really nice and sunny. Um, the iPhone 4S has inbuilt image stabilizer, so it doesn't have a setting where you can switch it on or off. It just comes with it, so you have to deal with that. If you don't like it on, too bad. And I do like having the option, even though keeping it on is fine, perfectly fine. So, um, yeah, but you may notice, like, I'm gonna, this is gonna be left, left is going to be the iPhone 4S and right is the iPhone 4. You can see the difference between 1080p and 720 as well. So that's all for videos for the comparison. And now I'm going to do photos. The camera also has an AEAF lock or auto exposure and auto focus lock. So what you have to do is actually find an object you want to take a photo of, select, select it on the screen till the box starts to flash and now you've actually got that locked and you'll be able to move your camera around, move your phone around I mean, and it will still be in focus. 
The iPhone 4S ten tends to actually get the colors and focus really right in most situations. As you can see from the last photo, the white balance is a lot better in low lighting. This is a low lighting photo and yet the, the pinks come out really nice, whereas the iPhone 4 makes it a bit yellowish red. So what do you guys think? Nice, right? There's also quite a few other inbuilt things with the iOS 5 that I'm really happy with. The notification center is so useful, setting the LED notification so whenever someone calls, messages, tweets or whatever, the light flashes up on the back just once, but it's really cool. Um, Siri, of course, gives you something to do when you're really bored. It's really fun to play with. So I hope this short tutorial has helped you guys decide if you want to upgrade your phone. Personally, I don't know if, I, if it's actually worth upgrading from an iPhone 4. But as I used to have an iPhone 3GS, this is so much better. Lastly, I'll leave you guys with a couple of clips I took with the iPhone 4S. Please enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, see you guys later. Bye!